So today I'm going to be doing a ASMR trigger video like the one that Cute Bunny did a while back. Um, I believe it was called Let Me ASMR You. She basically just did a bunch of different triggers to see which ones you were liked best. So I'm going to try out a few on you. First one I'll do is just some tapping. So I've been trying to grow my nails out a little bit in order to do this. So this is just puzzle glue. It's from Japan, I guess. Don't remember. How I got it. But I made a nice tapping sound. object is this bottle. I'll just be tapping on this. I still hold some olive oil from Ojai, California. So the next one is this necklace, because I've noticed that a lot of ASMRs really like playing with um, little things and showing their viewers collections and just kind of using it with their hands. So this is a necklace that I made. Um, someone gave me this show and then I braided some hemp cord. Sorry. Sorry. Added this uh, crude clasp on the end. Like this. So you pull it around your neck. Just like this. And then this hangs from a purple wire that I it around it. But, um, I like to make jewelry. Um, usually it's just little things like this, but I also do earrings and uh, other beaded projects. So the next thing that I have is just flipping the pages of a book. This cat's cradle by Kurt Vonnegut. It's definitely one of my favorites. Somehow managed to spend. 20 years of my life without reading it. A friend gave it to me this summer. Highly recommend it. So a while back I did um, a photo video where I showed some of my photos. Someone said that they really liked the wax paper, so 
so. that I've seen in the ASMR community is people who like hairbrushing videos, um, as in when the person doing the video brushes their own hair. So I've got this brush and my hair has been growing at an incredible rate. I had um, a pixie cut, a really short one, it's pretty much a buzz cut in December, and I haven't cut it since, but you can see that it's grown this much since December, which is long. I think I'm just going to grow it out long now. I had short hair for um since last July, so it's been for a year. So next, um, we'll move on to some personal attention. So I know that a lot of People in the ASMR community really enjoy makeup role plays and they enjoy having a lot of personal attention on them. So just use this brush. Get your cheeks. Like this. Just move the brush around to the top. Around your forehead, down your nose, above your lip, around your chin, and your cheek again, and your forehead again. I also like it when ASMRs um, lean in closely and act like they're telling a secret. Um, I'm trying to think of a secret that I have, um, but I think this YouTube channel is probably my biggest secret. Um, I googled my YouTube name today and uh, it was not as scary as I thought it would be. I just found a couple of Reddit comments that I hadn't seen before. And I saw that there's a little, um, some sort of page for me on an ASMR site, so that was kind of cool of me. Let's see. So another trigger that I've seen that I really like um, is when you're told to do something. So the person in the video is telling you um, to do something and then reacting to 
what you're doing, so I'm just going to ask you first to follow my finger. So just start there, follow it up here, and down, up again, to the middle, down, over here, across, down again, over here, good job, down one more time, up to the center, back in the middle. Alright, now look at it as it gets closer, farther away. Okay, so now I'm I'm just going to have you stare at my nose, stare right here, and I'm going to hold up my fingers um, and let me know when you see them wiggling in which side, okay? So stare at my nose, use a peripheral vision, let me know when you see them moving and, and which side. last one. Great. So the last one that I'm going to do is something that definitely triggers me. And, um, it's when people read me numbers and tell me to write them down. So this is the part of the video where you need to grab a pen and paper or you can just write with your index finger in the air or on your skin, or um, on the table you're sitting at, um, and you'll just write each number as I say it, or you can even type it into your computer. So I'm just going to read you lists of numbers, okay? Great. Okay, make sure to write them down, okay? Let me know when you're done with each string of numbers. Eight, nine, seven, two, three, oh, four, one, six. Okay. Three, one, six, seven, one, nine, eight, three, four. Great. Two, one, five, eight, six, one, zero, zero. Seven eight. Good. Nine three two. Nine eight zero. Four two six three. Okay. One zero three. Two four six. Nine one one. Great. Eight nine two six five six one zero nine two more eight zero three nine two five two zero zero great three zero nine eight one eight two four zero Last one. One three two six four nine eight seven two. Great. Well, I hope at least a couple of those worked, and thank you for watching. I appreciate all the kind words that I get, and uh, you all are wonderful. So, have a good day. Hello. Tonight I'm going to do a relaxation video. So what I'm going to do is um, kind of a guided relaxation. Um, 
just gonna take a little bit of imagination on your part, okay? So. I'm gonna need you to, if you're in bed, lie back, relax the muscles in your legs, your torso, your neck, shoulders, face. If you're sitting in your chair, just relax, loosen your posture. Take a deep breath in and then out. And then one more big breath in. What I need you to do now is focus on what I'm drawing, okay? All right. So I'm going to draw the top of your head like this. I'm not going to draw you with any hair. No face. Go down around the chin. Just your head like this, okay? All right. Now I'm gonna draw your neck. Okay. Let me zoom in a little. Can you see a little better now? Okay, great. Here are your shoulders. We're just gonna stop there, okay? Down to where your elbows would be. All right, so. You have no identifying marks on you, no hair, no face, nothing on your body, just you in your purest form. I'm going to take this blue pencil. And what I'm going to do is have you try to imagine energy of this pencil on your physical scalp, okay? So right now, I'm channeling all my relaxing energy to you, the viewer. So what I'm going to do is use this pencil as a way to let you know where the energy is flowing, okay? We're going to start out at the very tip top of your scalp. Just imagine a small circle of pressure at the top of your scalp. Just like this. Then going a bit to the side. Just still on the top of your scalp. And it moves down the side of your head. Just one side. All the good relaxing energy. Then the next side. Just slowly working its way down. Back over here. And back to this side. Here, back 
to this side. Concentrate it at the very top again. Good. I'm going to zoom in a little more. Okay. Great. So now I want you to imagine that this good energy top of your head, slowly melting down the top of your forehead, and as it moves down, it melts away all the stress, all the tension you have built up in your forehead, all the worry lines slowly disappearing. between your eyebrows, down your nose a little bit, around the sides of your eyes, just relaxing all the muscles, every little one, down your cheekbones. Down the sides of your cheeks to the tip of your chin, just like this, just relaxing all the muscles. If you've had your eyes open, now this energy is going to move down to your eyes as they get slowly heavier, but you can't keep them open anymore. Moves down your nose to your mouth, relaxing all the muscles in your mouth and your jaw. All right, so now imagine that right where my pencil is on your back. Blue energy is just moving down your spine. Just like this, creating a conduit. You can feel it beginning to relax your spine. Down one side. The other, down that side, up the first, then it moves out along your ribs, this good relaxing energy, it moves out through your blood, on your arms, moving slowly now, as your whole body begins to feel very relaxed, now we'll focus in on your back. All the muscles that you keep tense in the day all begin to relax. You can feel the energy moving through them, calming them, cooling them down, letting go of tension and worry. Letting go of everything that doesn't matter, that piles up during the day. Knowing that everything will be better in the morning. Or at least easier to tackle.
next, I'm going to take the light blue pencil. We're going to focus in again. I want you to imagine that the blue pencil is like fingers or like pressure, very thin pressure, like a pencil, like the eraser end of a pencil against your head. I want you to imagine the sensation on your scalp. We'll start off with one. Just barely touching the top of your head, right in the center, just like that, right down the core, as if it's just shooting through your entire body like an axis mundi. to the side, touching the tip of your head, pulling away, another one three inches on the other side, just touching the very top of your scalp. Layer of skin and nerves. And move to the side, right above your ear. Another one. Right above the other ear. So now imagine a sort of scalp massage. Fingers on the top of your scalp. Just massaging under the hair. down all the way to the side of your head. And then dragging up the sides. And then pushing down again. So lastly, I want you to imagine this gold color as being like a warm blanket, a warm sensation, okay? Start, start at the top of your head. It's just going to move its way down, covering your skin. like that. All the way down. Releasing any extra tension you have. Making you feel ready for bed. Or ready for the day. by now. Your muscles are relaxed. You're feeling good. Thanks for watching. Hi. Welcome to my room. Now you said that you
wanted me to do your makeup. And I know that you normally don't wear makeup. And I don't wear much myself. But I'm very honored that you would come to me to play around with makeup a little bit. Um, let's see. I think we'll start with something pretty basic if that's okay. Makeup doesn't always have to be really glitzy or frivolous. I think that wearing makeup can be very empowering. You get to choose what features you want to accentuate, maybe your eyes, or you want to bring attention to your cheekbones, or your nose, or maybe your chin. But it can be very fun even if you don't go out for a night on the town afterwards. Um, like tonight, I think we'll probably just stay in after this. Great. Alright, so, you still ready to do this? Okay, awesome. So I think what we'll do is start with a little bit of foundation or cover-up. I have this. Maybelline Mineral Power. I'm not really that into makeup, but I do have all of the basics. So, what you usually do with this is you just put a little on your finger like this. You can rub it around. And then you kind of apply it wherever you think you need it, so I find I typically need it under my eyes because I was kind of born with bags under my eyes, I feel. <laughs> Can I put some on yours then? Okay, you tell me where you'd like it. Yeah, we can definitely try under your eyes as well. Lean in if that's okay. Under your eye. And the other one. Okay. Great. Um, let's see. So next, I'm going to use this powder foundation. I'll use this brush right here. You can see it's not too big. It's got these bristles on the end. It's not very flat. So just put it around here until we get enough. Tap off the excess. I'm going to put it on your forehead, down your nose, on your cheeks, and a little on your chin. Okay? Is that alright? Great. I'm going to start with your forehead. Okay. I'm going to do some down your nose. Okay, and then the sides of your nose, too. And your cheeks. Your other cheek. On your chin. Right. That kind of gives your skin a more even tone, so it covers up any redness or blemishes that you might have. It happens to everyone. We all get blemishes. Alright. So, do you want me to try some blush? It doesn't have to be scary hot pink or bright red blush. It 
can just be a little bit to make sure that you have a healthy glow with your skin. Here's the blush I'll use. Just go like that. Get a little on the brush. Tap off some extra. And just put it on the apples of your cheeks. So, can you smile? Like this. Okay. Great. It's not a lot, just a little. Makes your cheeks stand out a little more. Makes it look like you've been in the sun, camping or on a boat maybe, out in the out in the water. Alright, so next. I could do some eyeshadow. Um, let's see. I have this one right here. gold and kind of a brown color on the other side or if you'd like I've got this one you could tell that I liked this color a lot but we still have um, this kind of bronze color that might be nice if you like that they're pretty shiny, pretty metallic. These, on the other hand, are a little more muted, kind of neutral. Um, starting with the light colors right here, going all the way to the darkest brown. So, with my eyes, um, I don't know if you can tell, but my eyes, um, I have very thin skin. You can kind of see the veins. <laughs> as weird as that may be. So I usually just go for a shade that matches my color. Um so that uh it's not as it's not as thin up there, it doesn't appear as much. Um so do you wanna pick the one that you think matches? your shade the most? That one? Okay, oh that one? Okay, yeah I can do that. Definitely. I know you don't want anything really glitzy or bold. You just kind of want to try it out, see how it feels. Right, so I think that for this, um, let's see. Here's the brush I'm going to use. You can see it right there. So what I do is I just do a crease, then I fill it in. I go all the way to the bottom of my brow. Sometimes I even do along the bottom and I use um, a shade that's maybe uh, one shade lighter than my skin color and it makes my eyes look kind of doughy but we can be kind of modest with it right now. I'll just use that color for you on my chest skin. 
Alright, so if you could just close your eyes, that would be great. Okay, you can open them. Good job. You are looking quite nice. Let's see. So next, this might be fun. I have Revlon Color Stay Liquid Liner, which is a pretty um, basic eyeliner. It's not for the lips. That's called lip liner. But this is eyeliner and comes in a little bottle with this little brush. It's not actually um, a brush with bristles. Actually, it is more of a kind of felt tip. You can draw a very straight line like that. So you can go above an eye, right on the top of my top lash line, or you could do the bottom, so right on my lower lash line, or both, and you could do the top and then flare it out a bit, or you could make it a little thicker on the top. Which one would you like? Okay, I can do that. Alright, okay. Close your eyes one more time. Okay. Perfect. Great. open your eyes. I feel kind of wet, right? Okay, well, just let them dry. Bat your eyes a little bit, as silly as I may feel. Okay, so, lastly, I have two different types of mascara. The mascara is what goes on the eyelash, so I really like mascara because my eyelashes are kind of short, um, or at least they appear short. I think they might just be very light on the ends, and so I use mascara to make them darker and make them appear longer. So, I have Great Lash. And this is waterproof. The color is soft black. And I have Prestige, my biggest lash, which I bought at work one day when I forgot to put on mascara. And this color is very black. Which one do you think? You would like to try. Okay. Biggest lashes. Time to go all out. Okay. So, you just untwist and kind of pops out this little brush. That's what the brush looks like even all around. Okay, so if I could just, could you tilt back a little bit? Perfect. Okay, I'm just gonna go straight for your lashes, okay? Keep your eyes a little kind of sleepy. Perfect.
Alright, I'm going to do the bottom lash too on this one. So I'm just going to come from below. Okay, perfect. Great job. bottom lashes. Perfect. You look fantastic. Let's see if there's anything else. Okay, so I'm just going to look at your face. I think you look pretty good. Do you like it? Do you like how it feels? You can kind of feel weird on your skin if you're not used to having cover up anywhere. Um, but it shouldn't be um, cakey or anything on your skin. Um, so let's see. Everything looks pretty good. Oh, it looks like part of your eyeliner smudged a bit, so I will fix that. I'll just use um, tissue. Just get that from the side. Okay. So I can redo that. Okay, if you could close your eyes. So myself. Anyway, thank you so much for letting me do your makeup. It's been so much fun and I hope you let me do it again soon. Bye. Hi, I'm so glad that you could come over. Um, so I'm going to draw your face today, if that's okay. Um, because I'm taking that drawing class and I, uh, one of my assignments is to draw someone's face. So, if that's okay, I thought I would do yours because you're just so good looking and you're my friend, so I like you a lot. So, I'm going to be using this book. Um, it's just a plain drawing pad and this pencil. All right. Okay, so um, if I could just move that piece of hair away from your face. Um, so I think first I'll do the outline of your face right along the edge, like that. Um, and then I'll work on the nose, um, and then do the eyes, and then the mouth, um, and then I'll do hair afterward. So, that's all right with you. Um, I'll just get started. forehead, your hairline right here, mm 
or move down your cheeks. Like that. have an outline to work with. Um, let's see. Next I'm going to do her nose. So, it's right down there. Let's see. Okay. Get to your nostril. I've got such a cute nose. <laughs> I bet a lot of cute people would kill to have that nose. Alright, I'll just shade that in. Shade the bottom of that too. You've got a couple freckles over your nose. Did you know that? draw those in. They just go right across there. Kind of like mine. It's funny how you look so similar to me. Just gonna color in your freckles. beautiful eyes, so this will be easy to draw. Okay. Your right eye over there. And your left eye again. You can blink, it's okay. I don't need your eye to be open the whole time. Alright, I'm just adding your eyelid. Okay. Um, I'm going to add your eyelashes now. And some bottom lashes. All right, now I'll do the actual colorful part of your eyes. So your iris and pupil. Okay. Your eyes are really piercing in a really good way, though. Okay. Got the shape. Now I'll shade them in. So, um, first your left eye. Left eye. All right. Great. Now your right eye. You've got some freckles in your eyes. Yeah. Did you know? Oh, yeah. They're really cute, though. 
Okay, you've got you've got one, two, three, and that one, and just the one in that eye. So I'm going to draw those in. Okay. Great. So now I'll move on to your mouth. Um, you don't have to smile, but if you think you can smile for that long, um, then you can. <laughs> okay. So I'll just be doing your mouth right that way. Okay. Get your Cupid's bow right there. Alright, so finally, the hair. Um, let's see, let me just... Um, over a bit here. it off your face. Okay. Last part. Got beautiful hair. You're welcome. <laughs> Was there always this length? Oh, it used to be longer. Mm -hmm. You like it though? Yeah. I used to have long hair too. Do a little bit of contouring on your face on here. To match your nose. Just a little extra shading. And then right here again. Okay. Great. I think my teacher will really like this. So thanks so much for coming over and letting me draw you. But it wasn't too painful. Um Thank you. See you later. Hi. It's good to see you again. How have you been? Glad to hear it. Um, so today we're going to be doing a cranial nerve examination. It's going to be very easy. No reason to worry about anything. Um, I'm just going to be writing down everything in this um, little black book. Um, this is where I keep all the notes I take on how well you do. I'm sure you'll do just fine. So, without further ado, we're just going to start. Um, we're going to start with some eye tests, just to make sure that everything's properly aligned and that you don't have any problems with your eyesight. Um, have you been experiencing any problems so far with your eyes? No? Okay, great. Um, okay, so the first thing that we're going to do, um, you're just going to stare at my nose gonna have both of my fingers up and you're just gonna let me know which finger is wiggling. You're just gonna point to it, okay? All right, you ready? Great. Great. Good. Good. Fantastic. Perfect. All right, great really well. 
Okay, now for this next one, I'm just gonna have you follow my finger. Um, just keep your head pointed at me. Just use your eyes, don't twist your head at all. Okay, all right. Over here, and over here. This way, perfect. Down here, cross. Back up, perfect. Back to the middle. Close up. All right, now look at my finger. Now look at my nose. Now back to my finger. Now back to my nose. All right, fantastic. You did really good. Okay. Now we're going to be checking your peripheral vision. So we're going to see uh, what is and is not in your line of sight. So I'm just going to be taking my fingers again and I'm just going to be moving them in until you can see them. And when you can, just let me know, okay? Just um, say, say there or something like that, okay? All right, great. Okay, perfect. Good. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to be doing that one more time. Um, we're going to do one side at a time. So if you could cover one of your eyes, um, that would be great. Ready? Okay, good. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Great. Okay, if you could just cover in the next one, that would be great. Okay. Perfect. Fantastic. Perfect. Okay, good. Good job. You can take your hand off your eye. Okay. Um, for this next one, you're just going to stare at my nose one more time. Um, and I'm going to be flashing numbers. And you're going to let me know how many numbers I'm holding up, okay? Alright, so it's going to be one of the hands. So try to watch both of them. But keep your eyes here. Use your proof. Fantastic. Perfect. Good. Last one. Perfect. Good job. Okay, we're going to move on to using this small light. Um, it might be kind of bright, but don't worry, I'll only use it a little bit. Um, it shouldn't damage anything. So the first thing we're going to do is, um, I'm just going to have you follow the light just to make sure that your eyes are aligned properly and that they're not shaking, um, there's no lagging, um, with where you're pointing them, so we're just going to make sure that everything is perfect there, so I'm going to turn it on, it's not too bad. I'm going to start out in the center, if you could just follow it over here, perfect. And up here, down, across, to the middle, to the center, down, the center again. And if you could just keep your eyes open so it gets a little closer. Okay, perfect. Okay, now I'm going to get a little closer, so if you could just cover one of your eyes, that'd be great. Um, I'm just going to show the light. Just, I'm just looking at your pupil right now, so if you could just... Okay, now if you could look to your left. Perfect. And then to your 
right. Okay, up and then down. Great. Okay, now uncover that one and cover your other eye. I'm just going to go to the other side. Okay, up. Now if you could go to the left. Okay, to the right. And then if you could look up for me, and then down. Perfect. Everything looks really good. Okay. All right. Now if you could just stare at my nose one more time, I'm going to have the light come in from different angles, just to see how your pupil dilates, see how your eye reacts reacts to light. Um, I'm going to come in from angles. I'm going to kind of swoop in, kind of like this, okay? So if you could just stare at my nose, try to keep your eyes open. It's helpful if I can see them. All right. Okay. One more on this side. Okay, next side. Great. And one more. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we're going to be doing one more test with your eyes. Um, if you could just cover one eye again. We're going to be doing a flash and then a hold. A couple flashes. So if you could cover that one eye. Okay, perfect. Next eye. Okay, great. Thank you. Your eyes look wonderful. They haven't changed um, at all since your last appointment, so that's really good. Um, not everyone can say that. So, okay, we're going to move on to just the nerves and muscles in your face, so this exercise should be pretty easy for you. Um, if you could first raise your eyebrows. Okay, great. Can you raise one? No? I can only raise one of my eyebrows. Look at that. Not the other. Not all of us can. Alright, can you smile? Smile really big? Okay, perfect. Um, can you do a frown now? Perfect. Can you puff out your cheeks? Good. Can you stick out your tongue? Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to look at is um, just the muscles in your neck. Kind of how um, your neck responds with your head. Um, so going to start with just having you leaning your head to one side, not stressing it too much, but allowing the muscles in the neck to stretch a little bit. Can you do that? Okay, good. Great. Alright, can you go to the next side? Same thing, muscle stretching, but not anything painful. Okay, back up to center. Alright, that looked really good. I'm glad you can do that. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is you're just going to tilt your head like this in different directions. Okay, can you do that? Okay, good. Alright, next one. Just like this. Okay, looks really good. Okay, I'm going to have you do that again. So if you could just go this way, and I'm just going to put my hand right down the side of your head, and I'm going to press against it so that... I can see how strong your muscles are there, okay? Alright, so if you could turn your head. I'm going to push. Okay, great. Alright, other side, if you could do the same exact thing. Okay, great. You did a really good job. Okay, now, can you, can you open your mouth? Okay, now, don't let me close your jaw, okay? Perfect. 
All right, can you stick your tongue to your cheek? Like that? All right, I'm just gonna put my hand there. You can just press against my palm. Perfect. The other side. Perfect. Good job. Okay. If you could just loosen up your shoulders a bit, and then if you could shrug your shoulders. Okay, shrug them really tight all the way up to your ears. Okay, good, good. Okay, next. Um, if you could put your arms out like this, palms up. Okay, good. Um, can you take your hands in front of your face? Okay, awesome. Can you flip your palm? Good. Can you do the other one? Awesome. Okay, can you put your hands next to your head like this? Okay, good. Now, can you take your pointer finger and touch your thumb? Okay, how about this knuckle? Good. Can you touch all your fingers to your thumb like this? Good. Perfect. I don't see anything wrong with that. Okay. So I'm going to get a little closer and I'm just going to take my fingers. I'm going to touch different parts of your face, okay? And I'm just going to tap them like this. I'm going to ask if it feels the same on both sides and if you can feel both of the taps because if not, then there's, uh, there's a problem with the nerves, okay? They should feel exactly the same. they feel the same? Great. Okay, a little lower. Feel the same? Fantastic. Forehead. Do they feel the same? Great. Down here. Does that feel the same? Wonderful. And lastly, does that feel the same? Good. Now I'm going to take this cotton swab and I'm just going to tap your face in different places and you need to let me know if you can feel it, okay? Let's just say yes when you feel it, okay? Alright, great. Good. Down here. Awesome. good. All right, now I'm going to take this little little pin. It's not a pokey pin, it's a bobby pin. And uh, this is a little different. It's cool to the touch, so um, it'll be a different sensation. And um, it won't hurt, I promise. So we're just going to do the exact same thing. I'm just going to touch very slightly. You feel that? Okay, great. Down here. Okay, good. How about here? Okay. Fantastic. Great. All right. Okay, so this is our last series of um, tests. We've just got a couple more. So we're going to do your hearing. Um, so first tell me when you hear snaps, okay? They're going to be very soft snaps like this. Um, I'm going to do one side. So I'm going to do this side first. So let me know when you hear them. Okay, great. How about this side? Okay, good, good. All right, now I'm going to cover this ear. I'm going to take this hand. I'm going to do snaps and I'm going to move it away. I'm going to see how long your range of hearing distance goes, okay? All right. Okay, fantastic. I'm gonna cover this ear. Okay, we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. Great. Okay, let me make a couple last notes. Oh, 
Okay, great. I'm just gonna um, tear this off. I'm just gonna send this to the nurse who's waiting outside and she'll get you squared away. And thank you so much for coming in. It was really good to see you again. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hello. Hope you've all had really good days and that you're relaxing right now and sitting back and taking some time for yourself. Um, I'm going to show you some of my book collection today, so I'll just be picking my favorites probably, or the things, the books that I think you'll find interesting or funny or things like that. So I have this little three shelf bookshelf. Um, and this is the only book space that I have. So, it's all full, as you can maybe see. And I'm rapidly acquiring new books. So I've run into kind of a dilemma. <laughs> but I think it'll be okay in the long run. You can never have too many books, I think. So, I have it, um split up by genre, kind of. I have um, religious books up here, the top left, then I've got poetry here, um, miscellaneous. I have the weird stuff right here, which goes into novels and short stories, and that goes all the way to here, which is where I start um, student publications and zines. And then this bottom row is pretty much all nonfiction, and it goes from classes that I've taken, kind of. So I have food classes, classes about feminism, queer theory. Um, and environmental books, and books about cities. I took a city class. It was fantastic. So, I'm going to go section by section and pick some of my favorites to show you. So, this book is called Jesus and Buddha. It's by Marcus Borg, and it is filled with these page-by-page -page quotations from the Bible and different sutras, and it shows a lot of similarities between um, Christian values and Buddhist values, um, which is very interesting. And then there's, of course, some commentary by the author explaining the different sections of text. Um, it's not, you know, very academic at all. It's mostly very small paragraphs with lots of white space. But it's really interesting and just kind of a fun read. Another one that I really like is I got this at a garage sale and it is called Mansions of the Soul The Cosmic Connection. It's all about reincarnation. got this great little pull-out um, self-mastery and psychology at a glance, which is an ad for another book by, I assume, the same publisher. And let's see when it was published. 1930. This is a first edition, which is crazy. Um, I tried reading it once. 
I've read most everything on my shelf, but I will admit that there are a couple things that I've purchased the intent of reading and haven't gotten around to it yet. <laughs> um, this is one of them. It's a little dense, and since it's written in 1930, not everything holds true necessarily today, which also makes it a little more difficult to get through. So in the poetry section, I have embarrassingly few books of poetry, but um, one of my favorites. And I think it's actually one of the best collections of poetry by Rilke that I've come across. Um, is this book, The Selected Poetry of Rainier Maria Rilke? Or Rilke? I never quite know how to say it. And it has a lot of his poems in it, as well as sections from... Um, Letters to a Young Poet, and the sonnets to Orpheus, which are incredible, um, and I actually borrowed this from a friend's older brother, and then never gave it back, <laughs> and I really should still. It's been, it's been a few years, <laughs> so we'll see if he still wants it, but I've really enjoyed it. Another great poet whom most people have heard of is Walt Whitman, and I have the portable Walt Whitman, um, which is very much used, and I actually had to tape the spine together because it was falling apart. But I love it. It has a lot of his poems in it. It has Song of Myself, which is one of my favorite poems. Song of the Open Road. Um, yeah, there's just a lot in here. And there's a lot of um, selections of leaves of grass. All sorts of things. Let's check out the publishing date. So, oh, this one was published in 1981, so a little newer than, than 1930. So I got this book at a garage sale as well. Um, it's a book on Amsterdam, as you can see by the title. And it's, it was published in 1978 in Italy, um, though it's written in English, so I don't know, but it just outlines some historic buildings and important places. And it has a bunch of just incredible photos. So, I like looking at it because I have never been to Amsterdam, but I would love to go. I have a friend who's studying in Amsterdam right now. Pretty jealous. Alright, so moving on to my weirder books. <laughs> They're not that weird, but in relation to everything else. Here's one of the best weird books. Um, I got this at a garage sale too. How to Choose Your People by Ruth Minshall. 
Um, it has this great little chart on the front, which gives a number ranking to um, all sorts of personality traits. And it is based in Scientology. It is a Scientology book. Copyright 1972 by L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> this is a real thing that I have on my bookshelf. Um, and every chapter is about the emotional tone scale, so different tones. Um, so you have ups and downs, um, enthusiasm, hostility, fear, and grief. And about how you should interact with people and how you should pick the kinds of people that are going to bring out the best in you. Um, it's a little controversial. <laughs> There's some interesting things in here <laughs> that I don't think really hold true, but it's pretty funny to have, and I, I've read most of it. <laughs> I've skimmed some parts, I'll admit. Another rare book I have is Aldous Huxley's Doors of Perception and Heaven and Hell. Aldous Huxley wrote um, Oh, come on. I know you're saying it. Brave New World. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and this was actually published in 1950s. Oh, 1963 this version. But, uh, this isn't a novel. <laughs> this is, um, a record of a mescaline trip, or multiple. It's been a while since I've read it. Um, <laughs> so I've never read Brave New World, but I have gained intimate knowledge of Aldous Huxley on mescaline. So... <laughs> That's why it's in the weird section. The human aura. Or if you're me, it's an aurette. <laughs> the, um, I have to admit that this is another one of the books that I haven't read completely. I've just skimmed it. It's pretty strange. It's all about energy, which I think is, like, legit, but, um, it's actually, like, very Christianity-based, which I was surprised in, um, and there's a lot of emphasis on different colors of your aura, which I should have read more into because I think that's really interesting. I'll have time to read more of that later. Okay. So another book that I have on the weird section is Healing Crystals. And I'm sorry if you like crystals and I just called it weird. I apologize. Um, it's an A to Z guide of over 430 gemstones. They've got lazulite, um, magnesite, magnetite, lavender jade, malachite, obsidian, onyx, pink quartz, rays, rock crystal, needle quartz, Channeling quartz crystal, all sorts of things, and it's all with little pictures, which is great. So, moving on. Oh, this is a great one. Here's a collection of short stories by Truman Capote, 
and this collection is called The Music for Chameleons, which is the title of one of the short stories in this book. And for those of you who watched the Stuff on My Desk video, you'll know that um, I found a mug on the streets of San Francisco last time I was there, and I took it home. And I also found this on the streets of San Francisco in front of someone's house, and I decided to keep it because it was fine. <laughs> And I read it right when I got back from spring break, and I really enjoyed it. He is a very interesting writer. Here's um, a picture of him. Uh, he was friends with Harper Lee, who wrote To Kill a Mockingbird. And the boy, I think his name is Dill. It's been a long time since I've read it. But that character with the, the, with the white blonde hair and the pale skin is actually based off of Truman Capote which is awesome. I love thinking about two authors having a friendship that's so removed from writing. It's not because they're writers, it's they just happened to grow up together, which is awesome. So I also have, um, this isn't my favorite book story-wise or content-wise, but I love the art in this book, actually. Um, this is the Divine Comedy of Dante, and this is Purgatorio, so you've probably heard of Inferno. This is the second book of the three, and it's rubber banded together because the spine disintegrated the second I opened it in class. It just all fell apart. You can see there are different sections of pages that all came out of the binding. Um, I'll show you some of the art though. I guess maybe they're watercolors or some sort of ink and water. Here's a couple more. I think they're really beautiful. If you haven't read The Electric Kool-Aid Acetest by Tom Wolfe, I highly suggest it. Um, this was one of the first recreational books that I read in college. Um, my dad had read it, and he recommended it, and I bought it at a garage sale like most of the books that I own, and it is such a trip. <laughs> it um, outlines a long period of time. Um, following Ken Kesey and the Merry Pranksters, and it's fantastic. I have quite a few books about um, the the Beat Generation and the overlap with the Pranksters and kind of the acid culture, I guess, on the West Coast at that time. One of my favorite authors is. Herman Hesse, and um, I actually read Beneath the Wheel this, this summer, um, and I've also read Magister Ludi, Siddhartha, um, Damien, and there's another I've read, but this one was amazing, I was very surprised. He just has this I, I don't know what it is about his writing style, but it's he usually writes about boys coming of age in like an academic setting where there are all these really brilliant people 
around them who make them think about really incredible things and there's this tension between being a child and an adult and like this loneliness that is never transcended <laughs> um, but I've just always really really liked him as a writer so he's one of my favorites no bookshelf would be complete without a perks of being a wallflower because I was once a 14 year old girl and I haven't read this for a very long time since I was 14, 15 but I just remember being that age and having this book just rock my world just totally change my life because I grew up in a suburb with the typical <laughs> suburban lifestyle, I guess. Not typical, but going to school with a bunch of kids who are very much like the kids in this book, and kind of getting to find myself through its pages, um, and begin to define myself in a way that was a little different from everyone else, which was really good <laughs> and fun. Um, I still haven't seen the movie. I heard Emma Watson doesn't do a very good American accent, but I'm still open-minded. I read this book this summer too. This is Miss Lonely Hearts by Nathaniel West and it um, published in it was published in 1933 and this copy is from 2009 but um, yeah the 30s it's a black comedy, so it's funny, but also very depressing. So, to people who aren't really used to reading this type of humor, it seems very sad. <laughs> and you can't like any of the characters because they're all completely despicable. But I loved it, and I read it very quickly. Um, and I thought that that started that type of humor started in the 50s, but if this was written in the 30s, then I could be very wrong. And this book also includes The Day of the Locust, which I'm halfway through, but I haven't finished that yet. I like it a lot so far, though. Daniel West. So, I read this book when I was a sophomore in high school and um, it was maybe one of my favorites that we read that year um, and this copy is very special because my uncle lives very close to Ray Bradbury well lived very close to Ray Bradbury and he actually purchased this copy for me and had Bradbury sign it which was incredible. It was so awesome of him. Um, so this is something that I hold very close to my heart. If you haven't read it, it's basically about um, this kind of dystopian society where you can't read books. <laughs> People have to memorize them and everyone just watches TV all day. And There's actually, not that this is very relaxing, but they drive very, very fast, and there's all sorts of, like, just dead animals lining the sides of the road from people hitting them and not the not caring, and every time I see an animal's body on the side of the road, some sort of roadkill, I literally every time think about that scene in that part of the book where everyone is driving so quickly they can't even see what's going past them. Everything's just a blur of trees and buildings and they just see colors streaming past them and they don't pay attention to what's going on outside. But um, this is a great book. I still really enjoy it. This 
So I've got this tiny little copy. I mean, it's a very small, small book play, but um, of the importance of being earnest by Oscar Wilde. And I just started Portrait of Dorian Gray um, today, actually, or yesterday. And I really, really like it so far. But this is hilarious. This is a great little comedy. I, I read it in the afternoon. It's very short. And um, I was laughing out loud the whole time, which was great. <laughs> so I really recommend it. So I have quite a few books by Kerouac. Even though I'm not a huge Kerouac fan at all. But um, The Subterraneans was a really beautiful book by him. It's about his relationship with this woman who is just really incredible. And you feel like you know her and have fallen in love with her by the end of the book. But he just messes it up at every chance. And you feel this, like, just intense longing and frustration the entire time. Because I think he wrote the entire book in, like, two days or something. And knowing Jack Kerouac, he didn't really edit at all. So everything in here is just stream of consciousness going over and over every single moment of their relationship that he could have changed. And it is very painful but very beautiful. So I, I really like this. I feel like it's very different from the other things that he's written, like On the Road and Dharma Bums, all that. Naked Lunch by William S. Burroughs is <laughs> the craziest book I've ever read in my life. <laughs> it's just absolutely insane. It's written as a series of like kind of short vignettes of these characters that are like partially not real and just usually on heroin and you usually do not know what's going on at all, but you're horrified. <laughs> but I loved it. <laughs> so it's not for everyone at all, but I read it not this past summer, but the summer before and just thought it was crazy. And I actually haven't read anything else by him, which I should do pretty soon. But if you want to read something that is terrifying and also great, then Naked Lunch is the book for you. Okay, so moving on to nonfiction. My favorite book, I took a class on the political economy of food, and probably my favorite book from that class was Nature's Perfect Food by E. Melanie Dupuy, and it's all about how milk has become such a staple part of our diets in kind of an artificial way, because we our bodies aren't actually meant to drink milk past being an infant, and how there are all sorts of religious reasons why milk became so popular, and um, all sorts of strange, like, cultural and social phenomena that helped milk become this weird, deified food that we think we need to drink, like, three times a day. Um, it was great. It was incredible. And it's pretty easy to read. Um, you don't need too much of a background in food reading about food or anything. So, if any of you are interested in learning about feminism, or if you identify as feminists or feminist allies, um, 
This is the textbook that we used for my class. It's called Feminist Frontiers, and it's a collection of um, all sorts of feminist writers, um, fairly recent, actually, most of them. But they do have, you know, the classic pieces of academic work. Um, and it was incredible. It was a great, it was a really great um, compilation of essays and excerpts from articles and books that I really enjoyed reading. And this is actually the old edition. There's a new edition that came out last year or two years ago. Um, but it was definitely well worth the money that I put into it. So my, one of my best friends got me this little book. It was published in, one second, 1912. And this is The Myth of Marriage by Alice Hubbard. So it was some very early very early feminist um, literature, academic work. It's really beautiful. I mean, the book physically is very beautiful. Um, and it's really interesting because it's written in 1912 or before 1912. And so it's obviously not reflective of today's culture, but it was very important at its time that someone said something about how, you know, marriage wasn't a good deal for women, and, um, at least not for, not for all women, and it's just great to be able to look back at this and kind of see, see where we've all come from. Um, yeah. So she actually bought it like months before Christmas and then saved it for me. <laughs> she really wanted to keep it, but she knew I would love having it, and she was right. All right. Um, I really liked this book. It's called Bobos in Paradise, and it's by David Brooks. And it's all about this new mix of the bohemian bourgeois and how they got to be who and where they are. Basically about um, how kind of all these hippie-ish people came across money and now live very upscale hippie-ish lives. <laughs> It's really great. Um, it, I read it for my Sociology 100 class, so I don't know if I would find it as enlightening as I did back then, but it was definitely one of my favorite books from that class. And I recommend it to anyone who lives in a city where there are lots of bobos. So second to last is The Regulars by Sarah Stolfa, and this is just a collection of photos she took um, of the regulars who frequent bars, or this one bar that she worked at, I think. They, I mean, it doesn't do it justice to hold them up here. She just does an incredible job of capturing these people in a really interesting place. Um, it's, I don't know, it's so great to see them all lit up when the setting is typically so dark and you get to see like tiniest little smears of makeup and you know little bits of sweat on their forehead and you get to look at what kind of drink they order. I really like it. So last is the 
Death and Life of Great American Cities by Jane Jacobs. Jane Jacobs is maybe one of the best writers on American cities today still, because so many of her theories are um, completely applicable to the way that cities are still formed and the way that they operate and the way that they change um, today which is incredible because this was written in the 50s, I'm pretty sure. I could look it up. Let's see. Um, oh, 61, my bad. But still, it's quite a while ago. Um, but she has, in, she has entire chapters on the sidewalks and diversity and concentration and um, the border vacuum, just all sorts of things. Um, I didn't read the whole book, but I read, like, most of, most of, someday I'll go back and read the parts that I didn't get assigned, because this was for my city class, but it's awesome. People still use it to talk about cities today, so if you live in a city, <laughs> this is a book for you. Thanks for watching. Um, the editing's probably going to be a little weird because I coughed a lot because um, I'm a little bit sick. Well, I'm getting over being sick. But thank you for watching, and I hope that it was kind of relaxing or fun or interesting. <laughs> um, so thank you so much, all of you, for subscribing and watching and being great. And I hope you have a great night or a great day. Bye. Hi YouTube, this is ASMR Arendt. Um, as you can see, I bleached my hair and I wasn't going to talk about it, um, but a lot of you were talking about my haircut on my last update video, so I knew you were going to comment on it <laughs> anyway. Um, it's growing out now a little bit as you can tell, but um, yeah. I bleached my hair, and it was lighter before, and it's kind of darkened. Um, I like it. I'm going to grow it out to back to brown, but um, it's been fun to be kind of a blonde slash redhead for a bit. Um, so, and I've got that out of the way. I acknowledge that. Um, I think what I'm going to do is, um, so my favorite parts of, like, cranial nerve examinations um, are light parts, and then when people tell you to do things with your face and your shoulders and I was thinking it would be great to have a video of just doing that without all the weird like role-playing stuff I think it would be really awesome to kind of start like um, a movement through the community of like kind of getting rid of the frills for some of these things like maybe we don't need the setup of a doctor's appointment and I don't have to pretend to be your healthcare provider in order to still give you tingles so, um, I'm going to jump right into that then, and I'll just be, um, telling you to do things with your face, your head, your neck, your shoulders, um, and then, yeah, that'll, that'll be my video. So, I want you to start out <clears throat> by relaxing all the muscles in your shoulders, just kind of Moving them around a little bit, pushing them down, straightening your neck, looking forward at me. And then we're just going to start um, with some muscle groups on your face. And I'm going to have you, if you can, um, move them whenever I do. So we're going to start with eyebrows. So you're just going to move your eyebrows up like this. Like you're surprised. Back down. down, two more, up, down, up, down, great. Um, so next we're going to be scrunching your eyebrows, so if you can just do this like you're angry or confused, so down, up, down, up, down, up, good, down. 
great job. Okay. So next I'm going to have you um, be blinking. So if you can, if you can close your eyes, and then open, close, open, close, open, one more time, close, open. Now if you can do this, we're going to do winking. So just one at a time. You're going to look a little funny maybe. Um, so first we're going to start with your right eye. I think just pick one and I'll pick one. Um, I'm gonna start with my left and you can pick whatever one you want to start with. Um, so we'll do four of those, okay? So two, three, and four. Then the other one. One, two, three, three and four. So next we're going to move on to um, your cheeks and your smile. So I'm going to have you try to relax all the muscles in your face again. Um, relax the corners of your mouth so they're just straight across. And I'm going to have you bring up your cheeks like this. Just scrunch up your face as much as you can from your cheek area. We're going to do four of those, okay? All right. Great. Okay. Um, now we're going to do side by side. I'm going to start with my left, and you can pick whatever you'd like. We're going to do four of those, okay? Green. Okay. Now the other side. Good. Great. Okay, now we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to be doing some frowns. And if you can, if you can just make a little <laughs> upside down U with your mouth. Like that. We're gonna do four of those, okay? Great. Good. Awesome, fantastic. Okay, so next we're gonna be moving on to rotating your head. Um this might help if you have any neck pain. Um some stretching that we're gonna do. Um if it hurts at all, please just refrain from doing it. Um, if you're unable to, that's totally fine. So we're going to start just by looking each direction. <clears throat> so follow me. I'm going to look this way first, okay? And now I'm going to look this way. Great. So we're going to do four. We're going to do three more this way, and then three more that way, okay? All right. Good. Remember to come back to center each time. So now the other side. Great. So now we're going to do looking this way and looking this way. We're going to do four of those, okay? All right. One. Two. Three. One more. Okay. All right, now we're going to do a little more stretching now. So I'm just going to have you move your head, tilt it over on the side. You can feel the stretch through your neck. You should feel pretty good. <clears throat> okay, so we'll do, <clears throat> sorry, <laughs> getting over a throat thing. So I'm going to have you take your head and tilt it on this side. 
and just hold it for five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Great. Back to center. Then we're gonna have you do it to the other side, okay? So, like this. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, great, back to center. So now we're gonna be doing um, some shoulders. So if you can just take your shoulders, scrunch them up to your ears like this. We're gonna do five of those, okay? All right. One, back down, two, back down, three, relax, four, relax, and five, and relax. Now we're going to be doing one at a time, five more of each. So we're going to start with this one. Just gonna have you up as far as you can to your ear and down. Two, three, four, and five. You can do it with the other shoulder. That'd be great. One, two, three. Four, and five. And we're just going to stretch again. Tightening up those muscles. Great, back to center. <clears throat> okay, so the last thing we're going to do um, is hopefully also going to engage your chest a little bit, your ribs, maybe your collarbones, the muscles around here. So I'm going to have you, if you can, um, bring your shoulders back and then push them forward. So we're going to do five of those, okay? So we'll go back, forward, that'll be one. Back, forward, two. Okay. One, back to center. Two, back to center. Three, back to center. Four, back to center, and five. Great. Well, those are all the little exercises I have for now. Um, if you liked that, let me know and I can take requests of other things to do. I've never actually solicited requests before, but if you have other ideas for something like that, um, yeah, I think it would be really cool, maybe for my channel. I focused more on not doing role plays, but just um, isolating specific triggers and just doing those. I think that is kind of the direction I want to take my channel now. Um, I have one more week of school, and then I will be on summer vacation, but I'll be working um, full-time. But I'll have more time to make videos and get back into this, um, which will be great. And I hope all of you are enjoying your days today or your nights and that you are in good places and feel safe and happy and creative um and i will talk to you all soon thanks for watching